What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode But before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic That's very important for this one as well And the player ratings and potentials may vary depending on what day space you're using and how they perform for you during the season You don't have to follow all the tips This is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club This is mainly the end of those of you out there who may be new to the game and just want some help or for those of you out there who may just be stuck for ideas on what players you could sign for a certain team in career mode so yes who to sign for is back with another episode this week the last one was Manchester United now going to take a look at Liverpool yes the side from Anfield going to give you my tips on what players to bring in for Liverpool now as you can see these are the objectives in the first season for Liverpool um they're pretty easy I would say these objectives aren't too bad whatsoever I think I'll discuss them in full uh, uh, towards the end of the episode, but as you can see, the objectives I think are quite easy. But what I will say is this uh, as per usual, who to sign for series, we don't really care about the off the pitch objectives, but the on the pitch objectives, those two ambitions right there of qualify for the Champions League and win the FA Cup, put it this way, I was quite surprised that that's all the board want you to do in the first season because I think with this Liverpool team, you are definitely capable of doing that. And again, I'll discuss this in a bit more detail towards the end of the episode, but anyway, uh, Liverpool had quite a few players out on loan, uh, more on that later. <laughs> I'm sort of saving things for a few minutes later and also look at the contract section as well uh, a few players have their deals that come at the end of the year but I'd only give contracts to two players uh, Trent Alexander Arnold and also Ryan Kent as well give these two youngsters new deals let everyone else go those are the only two players you want to worry about and also as well as they're both under the age of 23 don't do it straight away leave them until the end of the season and then offer them contracts come the end of the year don't waste your cash now wait until the end of the year and then give them new deals uh, so we take a look at the squad report then for Liverpool you see the line up as well in uh, just a moment's time. Liverpool's team looks like this, and whenever I do a Who to Sign For episode, when I show you the squad report, I usually basically lay out my intentions for what transfer targets I'll have, or give my brief analysis on the squad. What I'll say right now on Liverpool's team is this. Take a look at the age of the players as I'm scanning down right now. What you're going to notice is that Liverpool only have two players that are 30, uh, sorry, it's just a 31 or older. James Milner's 30. God damn it, Milner, ruin that. Uh, there's only two players that are 31 or older. Those two players are Clavan and and Manninger. Now, that means that you only have two players that are 31 or older. I just said the exact same thing, didn't I? And it means that you've got a really, really young squad here at Liverpool. And Clavan and Manninger are new signings to the Liverpool side as well. Milner is the only player that you could sell, uh, sell in the first season that is 30 when you load up the game instantly. Their team is very, very, very young and their team is all about development. Right now, of course, Jurgen Klopp is in his uh, his first full season in charge of Liverpool. And i got to say, it's it's a really good team. It's a really, really awesome team. And of course, they start off with a transfer budget of around £64 million as well. So a decent budget to go along with a really young team, which is already very good and also has very good potential as well. This is a really, really awesome team to start up a new career mode with and a very, very fun one indeed. Sorry, 61 million pound transfer budget, not 64. I got that one wrong. But uh, yeah, it's a good team. But where would I improve with Liverpool? What signings would I look to make with the side from Anfield? Well, you saw their lineup there. You saw their squad report. It's got depth in a lot of positions, but the one area I would say that Liverpool could do of improving is the left back area. And one of the areas that the fans were hoping they'd see a new signing for for this season. Of course, Alberto Moreno, the fans aren't really too keen on the Spaniard because his uh, inability to defend is obviously a bit of a, uh, a problem, no real surprise, uh, being a fullback, but James Milner right now is playing in the left-back role. Now, of course, he can do that, but they don't really have like a really solid first-choice primary left-back. I would say the left-back area is where you want to strengthen Liverpool, and what player would I recommend signing? Well, why not one of the best left-backs in the game? David Alaba, 87 overall, 24 years old, £40.5 million valuation at Bayern Munich right now, the Austrian. An awesome, awesome player. You may have to spend a little over his valuation. We had to pay £55 million for his services, but this guy is awesome and one of my favourite players on FIFA. He is so versatile. You'll see his full range of stats in just a moment's time. The guy could literally play anywhere on the pitch, and that's why I think Alaba would be an amazing signing, because not only would he improve your left-back role, give it more depth as well, more depth in the full-back roles, but also you would know that if 
if you had an injury crisis in one position, you could move this guy anywhere on the pitch and he'd be just as good. Look at those technical stats. They are so balanced. Look at his physicals. They are so balanced. Mentals as well. He's one of my favourite players on FIFA. He's 5 foot 11, so centre back not a bad position for him either. He's tall enough, I would say, even though I like my CBs to be 6 foot or over. But he's a really solid player. I would say splash as much cash as you need to on David Alaba. He should be your number one undisputed transfer target for Liverpool. Bring him in and improve your Liverpool squad as he is one of the best players in the game right now at 87 overall. And he has nice potential as well, so grows three more ratings. So what a left back. He'd be my number one target. Now, as for selling players for Liverpool... You saw their squad a minute ago. One of the best things about this side is they don't have a lot of deadwood here. There's quite a lot of players. They all have really, really decent stats or at least potential. There are some youngsters, yes, who you might want to sell on, but there's not too many players that are aging that you want to replace instantly. But the one player I'll tell you do need to sell in the first season, and probably the only player you need to sell in the first season, really, is Lucas Lever. He's valued at £9 million. We got £8 million from Leicester, but his contract's up come the end of the year. He's on, I think, about ninety five grand a week, something like that. You probably not going to use him in the first team or in the first 11 I should say in your first year as well you're not going to give him a new contract sell Lucas Leiva and even if you can't get his valuation which is nine million pounds anything around that I would take it let him go and try and bring in someone else to replace the experienced Brazilian who would I bring in this guy right here Ozjakup because you'll still have some money left over after the signing of David Alaba this guy right here would be a really solid signing for Liverpool 81 overall 23 years old why would I recommend Ozjakup the same reason why I'd recommend David Alaba. Versatility, a key word and important one as well for these two players. Ozjakup can play all down the spine of the team. Well, maybe not the centre-back role, but this guy's got some really awesome stats and you'll see in just a moment's time that we managed to complete this deal for £26 million. And I would say that even though it is a little over his valuation as he's valued at £19.5 million, it's still worth it. He's a really, really solid player. He'll go straight into your first 11 as well. I would have Wijnaldum, uh, Henderson and this guy as your midfield trio so take out Adam Lalana. he's just a really really good player and again versatile he's really really versatile can play all across the spine of the team again maybe not in the centre back role but definitely def uh, defensive midfield midfield attacking midfield behind a striker doing a CF role and also maybe maybe just maybe in a striker role as well you might not mind trying him in that role too he's got some really great stats and I think he'd be a really really solid sign of the course the CM area would of course be his best asset and his best his best asset his uh, his best role but uh, anyway I forgot to show his stats again so sorry about that but you saw him a minute ago anyway and you'll see them towards the end of the episode too he'll be a really great signing and again with 87 potential for 26 million pounds yeah it's over his valuation by a little bit but he'll far exceed that money you spend on him in just a few years um still following that once you've signed those two players you might not have much money left over but i would still recommend a, a couple of new players as well for the liverpool side just before you end the summer transfer window uh, those two players funnily enough are two of the players that i signed in the who to sign for manchester united episode last week uh, those two players are are Svila, the Anderlecht goalkeeper, and also a guy who I think I'm going to sign in pretty much every single Who to Sign for episode I do. Tammy Abraham, apologies for the repetition, but I really like the youngster. Tammy Abraham, of course, on loan from Chelsea in the game, but in, uh, sorry, on loan from Chelsea in real life, but in the game, listed as a permanent Bristol City player. The young English striker, 69 overall, very, very young with 85 potential, so 16 growth. And as for Svila, the Belgian goalkeeper uh, currently playing for Anderlecht, 17 years old, 63 overall, 83 potential. So that's 20 Grove. Those two players will grow like madmen and be really, really awesome players. So Abraham, you can get him for around £2 million. He's a little over his valuation, but that's not really a big deal. 69 overall and 18 years old. 85 potential. You know this guy's going to far exceed £2 million in the future. No doubt about that. And for Svilar as well. Again, I spent a little bit over his valuation. 750 grand in total. But this young goalkeeper has 20 Grove. How about that? And as a third choice slash fourth choice goalkeeper slash fifth choice possibly when Bogdan comes back from loan, he's going to quietly grow in the background, and as the years go by and as the goalkeepers get older, you know you've got this guy itching for a chance in the first team at some point, and eventually, after a long time, he might well be good enough. Um, still, again, for £2 million and for 750 grand, I've got to say, these two players right here, they'll get barely any minutes in the first season. These guys aren't necessary. I'm not going to kid you here. I'm not going to lie to you. These guys aren't necessary, but it's just something I like to do when I've got money left over. You know, bring in some kids, bring in some youngsters, and try and develop them for the future. It's just something I like 
like to do, but you may seem it to be kind of pointless, especially if you only plan on playing one or two seasons. But if you do uh, do plan on doing a long stay with Liverpool and you have the money to buy these guys, I'd definitely recommend it. You know, great growth, really good youngsters, and they'll be solid investments for the future. And even if you don't play them very much, eventually they'll, they'll outgrow uh, the, the, the money you spend. Not outgrow the money you spend. They'll grow enough to be worth more than the money you spent on them, and you can sell them and make a quick profit. So it's, it's worth doing anyway, I'd say, whether you plan to use them or just sell them on at a later date. But those are the four signings I would sign for Liverpool. And I know in the last episode with United, we spent over £150 million, I think, in total. And we brought in loads and loads of new players. With Liverpool, only four signings. But one thing I would do real briefly is bring back a player from loan as well. If you still have the cash to do it, I would get this guy back from his loan spell at Sporting right now. Lazar Markovic, uh, the Serbian winger that can also play right back as well. This guy will offer cover to your team. And again, as a backup for Nathaniel Klein as well in the right back role, I think you should bring him back. I know that some people prefer to keep him out on loan so his wages get paid for and he'll obviously get more first team football as well in Portugal as he won't be in the first 11 for your Liverpool side but for cover and for peace of mind I think just bring him back he's got 83 potential so grows 5 ratings and I think he'd be a solid little player to bring back to your Liverpool side as opposed to leaving him out on loan but again that's up to you whether you want to bring him back or not so 4 players get signed 83.75 million pounds get spent on those 4 players and of course the bulk of it goes on David Alaba the world class left back the question is is it worth spending that much money on just the 4 players well I would say yes. When you spend eight, when you spend over £80 million, pounds, you'd expect to get more for your money than four players, but you've got to look at the players you're bringing in. Two good youngsters for the future, not going to cost you much, and the two players you bring in, Oz, you could be grow to an 87 overall and go straight in your first team, and David Alaba, 87 overall and 90 potential, and that is improving your weakest area with one of the strongest players for that role. I think both of those signings make sense. I think all four of the signings make sense, really, and I think for 83.75 million pounds, I almost said 84, 83 3.75 million pounds, they'd be solid signings. Now, of course, Liverpool's objectives at the start of the season were to finish in the top four and win the FA Cup. Well, as you can see, we did meet the league objective after simulating to the end of the season. They finished in second place, 13 points behind the league leaders, uh, I should say the champions even, uh, Manchester United with 85 points. So that's fair enough. They didn't win, win the title, weren't expected to, but that league objective still gets met and they qualify for the Champions League next season. But as for the cup objectives, they were supposed to win the FA Cup. Well, that didn't work out that way. Unfortunately, after seeing the simulation come to an end, they didn't even get into the round of 16 stage, knocked out in the round of 32 stage. And as for the EFL Cup as well, they made it into the round of 16 stage, but lost to Manchester United, who went on to win the competition as well. So I'll hold my hands up. I unfortunately failed the FA Cup objective with Liverpool. They did not win the FA Cup, like the board asked, but they did make it into the Champions League, finished in second place. Not bad whatsoever. I'm sure the fans would certainly take that. And I, I would definitely say for a first season, that's not too bad. Again, there's no European objective. The off-the-pitch objectives don't really care about too much in uh, in this series at all. Um, but to finish in second place, I think if you're off the Liverpool fans, second place finish this season come the end of the year. No trophies, but I still think they will take that. Personally, that's just me. There may be a failure in that domestic cup uh, aim there at the start of the season given to us, but I would still say second place is not so bad whatsoever. And as you take a look at the final squad report right here, as you can see, the players improving in stats. Once again, what you've got to remember with Liverpool is that this is a young side that's going to get better year after year and I'll say this real briefly my final point on Liverpool as well before we end this episode is this I get a lot of people asking me what team to use in career mode for a first person playing uh, like a beginner for a, for a career mode I would say if you're doing a Premier League career mode and you want to begin with a team that's not too challenging and also not ready made Liverpool is the team to go for I mean they're absolutely inch perfect you don't need to do that much work in the first season just a couple of things here and there to touch up the side and make it look even better and it's a great great squad for the future. It's a really, really awesome young team with lots of good players and I think you'd have a lot of fun doing a Liverpool career mode for many, many years. I would say for a beginner and you want to do a Premier League career, this is the side to begin with. The aims aren't too hard. You can definitely meet the, uh, the on-the-pitch aims for sure, no doubt about that. And as for the team, you don't need to do too much work. It's a good squad already and it's got so much young talent. It'll continue to get better year after year. So that is who I would sign for a Liverpool career mode, guys. A big thank you for watching this episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. I'm thinking of doing a four and who to sign for for the next episode so let me know in the comment section down below what team you want to see me do next in the who to sign for series and again i think i'll do a four and one for my next episode but thank you for watching this one i hope you enjoyed it if you have then please leave a like don't forget to comment and give me a suggestion for the next team in the who to sign for series and i'll see you for that episode very soon